All right, hey guys, um, we are about to go live for Bible reading. Well, technically we are getting ready to go live. And I do want to say sorry to everybody for the headache that things have been. Um, I do hope and pray that everybody will forgive me for that on my end. I do um, basically my dishes every morning now. Um, so my wife don't have to, and I do it because I want to. Um, but this is just something I choose to do on my behalf instead of making her have to do. And apparently my music is not coming through and that ain't a good thing. There we go. I got my music. Yay. All right. Cool. We're good, guys. Please forgive me. I was having technicality diff technicality diffuse technicality issues. Um. But anyhow, we're gonna do it works. Now I do apologize about my green screen right now. I'm not messing with it. I'm not in the mood. So. Please forgive me for all that. I will, after Bible reading, try to get things fixed, maybe. I don't know. But I just don't feel like dealing with it at the moment. Um, so again, sorry for a lazy boy stream. I go live and I do what I do and I dress how I dress when I'm just being lazy and don't want to throw together something nice. Um... But before we go any further, we are in 1 Timothy chapter 3. But before we go any further, I'm going to pray. Um, and ask God to take me out of the picture and put him in the picture. And allow his name to be glorified, magnified above all else. Because I don't want anything to do with it, you know. This is for him. His time. And this is only enjoyment for me during Bible reading and spending time with family in Christ. So thank you, each and every one of you. Oh, Lord, who come in here and do decide to spend time with me. I do appreciate you. Father God, I ask of you to please come in here today. Please allow your Holy Spirit to take reins and to have his peace and to have his say, Father. And if I'm in the way, please, Father, remove me from the picture. Father, I ask of you to have your will and your way done on this earth as it is in heaven, and for your kingdom to come, Father, I ask of you to please help us have peace together with one another, and in unity, Father, allow us just to come together for fellowship and brother, uh, brotherly and sisterly love, Father, in you. Father, regardless of the times that we're living in currently, I know that people will cry, peace, peace. And that just in the days of Noah, and they will be handed off into marriage and given in marriage and things like that, and they'll be partying, Father. But instead of worrying about those things and worrying about the times we're in, yes, we're called to pay attention to the signs of the times, Father. But instead of worrying about when your return is, when you're going to return, Father, or how close your return is, let us come together as one in spirit, truth, and unity, and let us live together for you and for your glory and your righteousness, not our own, Father. But I ask of you, Father, to please just have your will and have your way, Father. For I'm thankful for everything you do for me and my wife and my brothers and sisters. Regardless of the tribulation and trial that come our way, Father, we give you praise, honor, glory, and thanks for everything, Father. Even this new day, this new mercy, this new grace, Father, allowing us to wake up a new day, Father. That is a mercy in and of itself, Father. So thank you. Let us not worry about the days of Noah or even the ends of days or the signs of the times, Father. Because, yes, we are to pay attention to the signs of the times, but... We need to remember that all these things are things that need to come to happen. But even then, it is not yet, the time is not yet near for us to go home. For there are still multitudes of things to happen, Father. And one of the biggest things is 
we will be given over into certain categories that aren't going to be pleasant, Father. But let it be able to bring your name, glory, honor, and praise regardless. Um, let us not worry about these things, though, Father, for this is time to bring you glory, honor, and praise, and just to listen to music, and to give thanks, Father, and to spend time in your word. Thank you, in your son, Jesus Christ, and I pray and ask, amen, Father. Thank you. All right, guys, we are in 1 Timothy chapter 3, um, qualifying for overseers and deacons. This saying is trustworthy, and I forgot to turn on my... Give me a minute. I, I don't want to do that, because if I forget to do that, I won't be notified when someone tries to chat in my thing, and after that, I'll have to apologize to people. But if you guys will give me a minute, I'm going to quickly get me a rag or a washcloth to wipe my nose on. I've been having a runny nose here lately, and it's been bothering me. Um... Hey, Roy boy, what are you doing, buddy, huh? I got sinuses now. My ears are ringing. I hate when that happens. Um, I got a runny nose mainly because of allergies, and it could just be a change in the season, too. It could be a hard telling of it all. So I do ask of my family to please forgive me for that. All right, so this saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to be an overseer, he, de he desires a noble work. An overseer, therefore, must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, self-controlled. Hey, kitty, where'd you go? Oh, is Roy. Um... The husband of one wife, self-controlled, sensible, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not an excessive drinker, not a bully, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not greedy. He must manage his own household competently and have his children under control with all dignity. If anyone does not know how to manage his own, his own household, how will he take care of God's church? He must not be a new convert or he might become conceited and incur the same condemnation as the devil. Furthermore, he must have a good reputation among outsiders so that he does not fall into disgrace and the devil's trap. The deacon or deacons likewise should likewise should be trustworthy or, well, should be worthy of respect, is what it says. Not hypocritical, not drinking a lot of wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. They must also be tested first. If they prove blameless, then they can serve as deacons. Wives, likewise, should be worthy of respect. Not slanders, self-controlled, faithful in everything. Deacons are to be husbands of one wife. Managing, hold up, let me um, bookmark this. There we go. And hello there, Jay Stevens. Hope you're having a good morning. I'm in here just getting a little breakfast ready for to bring outside. Not a problem, brother, not a problem. That's more than fine. You guys do you, and I'm pretty much doing me and having a good morning, you know? So I, I'm thankful to each and every person out there more than they probably realize. Um, I'm probably going to have to edit my streams to include a morning a morning stream to do, um, uh, what's it called, um, dishes and housework and stuff, mainly because it makes it easier for me to stay focused on the housework when I'm actually streaming. I don't know why, it just is easier. It helps me focus on talking to you guys and it helps me keep focused as a whole to get things done. Um, so, but yeah, um, welcome in everybody. I hope everyone has a good morning. Managing their children and their own households com competently. For those who have served well as deacons acquire a good standing for themselves and great boldness in the faith that is in Jesus Christ or in Christ Jesus. The mystery of godliness. Verse 14, I write these things to you hoping to come to you soon, but if I should be delayed, I have written so that you will know 
how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the foundation of truth, and most certainly the mystery of godliness is great. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. Amen. Um, now we're going to go to chapter 4. Um, and I'm also going to get me a drink of my coffee real quick. I made my cold, or cold coffee and I'm quite content. Making whole, homemade cold coffee can definitely save you guys a lot of money. Um, instead of going to McDonald's or places like Starbucks, so on and so forth, you know? Chapter 4, Demonic Influence. Now, the Spirit explicitly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, paying attention to deceit, two deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods that God created to be received with gratitude by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, since it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. Amen. A good servant of Jesus of Jesus Christ, verse 6, if you point these things out to, to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished by the words of the faith and the good teaching that you have followed, but have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths. I can't help that. I, I like studying. I like studying mythology, but again... It tells us to have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths. So, I guess to be an, a good steward and a good believer and a fellow, or a good steward and a good teacher, or not even a teacher, a good brother and a good steward would be to have nothing to do with these things. But then again, we're always taught to know our enemy. Um, and our enemy knows the Bible better than we do. And realistically, I've also been able to find things from other myths that if you really study the Bible well enough, you can see how these myths have taken things from the Bible to create their own myths or legends. And so that's all that I'm trying to state about that. So I, I agree with the word that we need to be cautious and careful. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I, I want to say and think and believe that it's telling us to be careful about these myths and these legends leading us astray from the salvation of our Christ and our Lord and our, our Savior, Christ Jesus, or Christ Jesus, because we need to first learn our own faith before we go digging deep into things that can be dangerous um, for new believers or believers in general. Um, I like to study these things. I don't know why. It's just an enjoyment I have. Um, I ain't the most well-educated, nor the most all-knowing. I can't claim that, nor will I ever. But I do enjoy studying my Bible. I enjoy being able to compare it to Greek mythology, Roman mythology, the Asian cultures, mythology, and things like that. Like... All very quickly, very, very, very quickly reference Revelation, or not Revelation, but Genesis, okay? And actually, I'll just pull up a whole new part of this, this Bible thing real quick, and we'll go to the Christian Standard Version, uh, okay? And we'll do this. We'll go back to Genesis, all right? The man and the woman... Mm, uh, it was either this one or it was the next one, but let me, I think it was actually the next chapter, so give me a minute. Yes, it was this one. Okay, so this is where I'm going to compare this, okay? Now, the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that God, that the, the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you can't eat from, or you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden 
But about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said you must not eat it or touch it or you will die. Now, a lot of people think that a lot of people misinterpret it and say, oh, well, we would really die, like just like the serpent hinted to. No, well, we would at some point, yes, but what it was leading to more than anything was a spiritual death. It led to a spiritual death, and realistically, yes, it did lead to a physical death as well, guys, because realistically, if I'm not mistaken, there's I don't think there's anything to back it up, but if I'm not 100% mistaken, all right, and this is only speculation. Our years were only numbered to 120 after the fall from the grace of God and the fall from eating that fruit, the forbidden fruit, whatever it may have been, the tree, okay? When we partook of that, that was when our years were numbered, okay? When we shown ourselves to be wicked and things like that, okay? So if I'm not mistaken, I'm almost certain we were already guaranteed immortality. From the very beginning onward. Okay, guys? And if we would have just remained innocent and trusted God, we wouldn't be dying right now. Now, there is a tree. It's called the tree of life. That had the same, it had a similar fruit to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But the tree of life even mentions and I don't I cannot speak the original language but if I'm not mistaken from our translation it talks about how that if you were to eat of the tree of life you'd basically live forever so when I read that and I understand the way our translations read it and say it you're pretty much given immortality while walking the face of this earth and then the, yeah God took that tree and hid the garden for a good reason because I'm sorry with how much I see of humans and how how little good I well let me rephrase that there's good and evil in all things but we tend to commit more evil than we commit of more good okay so I can only imagine that if an immortal human could walk this earth to see the evil for all eons that that person could commit I'd rather not comprehend that or try to wrap my mind around it that would be absolutely horrible I would just rather not even put my mind into the deepest thought process of trying to consider it. But the reason why I'm going into this is because there's a good point to this Genesis. And I'm sorry I'm jumping all over the place now that I was going from the New Testament. But there's a reason for this. Um, I'll just read this part of it, even though this part wasn't the important part, okay? No, you will certainly not die. Again, a lying serpent. The serpent said to the woman, in fact, God knows, again, foolish and a liar. God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Yeah, we came to know good and evil. I'll be honest, we did. But we were truly innocent like children and God made us to be innocent like children. And it was better left to be innocent like children. Give me a minute. But the second we ate like that, and that was the enemy's plan, was so that we could know good and evil and so we could pick evil over good. Um, yeah, no, no, I definitely agree, brother. I definitely agree. Sin would have existed forever and that would have been absolutely horrible because man would have lived forever and um, that tree would have granted immortality if they could have found it and ate from it. And I would have rather... <laughs> I'm glad. I'm honestly thankful. Extremely thankful God guarded that tree and hid that garden and the tree away for all eternity. I'm extremely thankful he did this. Throw out the manna at the east of the Garden of Eden. He placed a cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to a tree of life. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Um, in fact, God, okay. In fact, God knows when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God. No, we won't be like God. We'll just be able to fall into sin and choose sin over him. And that's what it was about. Um, the woman saw that tree was good. Again, deceit, evil. Now, there's a reason why I'm reading this whole point, And this is, this is really something more important. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and skip this because it ain't important on that end. I mean, yeah, it is important. Don't get me wrong. The entire Bible... The entirety of the entire Bible is truly, honestly important. But here, this this is actually funny. The eyes of 
when they both ate of it, pretty much, I'll just summarize it, then both, then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew they were naked. So here's the problem. They didn't care they were naked because they were innocent. They were like children in the eyes of God, okay? They were innocent. They were truly, honestly innocent. And if they were just living for God and they would have obeyed, then none of this would have ever mattered, mattered at all. We would have been immortal and we would have been living in innocence and truth and honesty with God and we would have been living for Him. And none of this, none of this, anything of it would have mattered. But it don't matter at the end of the day because we have Christ, our Lord and Savior, at the end of the day now that did something for us. But um, I'm getting to the consequences because that was the part I wanted to get to. That was the most important for me because that was the, to do with the dragon or the snake or the serpent. And there's a reason for this. Now, I've studied the Asian culture, China specifically, and how people and history and whatnot, how people tend to justify that snakes or serpents or dragons at one point had legs or what would be considered front front talons or front little bitty legs or front talons and back talons hind hind talons and hind legs okay now there's a reason why i really 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 love studying my bible and getting into other cultures sometimes and studying it's because if we get into this we can see where they've taken from the Bible and compared their their culture to the Bible and taken it and developed their own faith and their own their own religions, their own mythologies. Now I'm not judging them nor condemning them. But this is where I get deep into this. This is where I love God and love his word and love how simple and how easy it is to find certain things in certain situations. Um God bless it, where's it talk about the snake? Um So the Lord asked the woman, what have you done? Okay, so God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than any livestock and more than any wild animal. You will move on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. Now this is where the prophecy comes in, guys. The biblical prophecy of what is to come far eons later. And this starts in the book of Genesis. I will put hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his hill. That ain't talking about you and me, brethren and sisters. Um, that's talking about Christ, Jesus, from the very beginning. That was originally talking about him from the very beginning, if I'm not mistaken. If I can understand scripture, even in Genesis later on, it talks about Abraham and Isaac and the sacrifice of his son. Okay, and see, God was testing to see how far he was willing to go. God was using us as an example, um, is the best way I can think to word it, um, to see how far we'd be willing to go to live our lives for him. Um, and so, and then at the last second, God stopped him. And so instead, God sends us his son to die for us. And that is beautiful. I'm sorry I'm kind of rocking back and forth come thinking of the symbolics and beautiful meanings of that. Now, if you were to go and look up history and study history about the serpent or the snake and about the Asian culture, you would understand that they believe that serpents or serpentine dragons or whatever else or even a large chunk of history states, oh, well, snakes at one point or serpents at one point didn't always wallow in the ground they believed that they had front talons and hind talons or hind legs and front legs, you know? Well, the only verse that we have to go with to back that up is out of Genesis, sadly. I wish I had more. Um, but realistically, that was from the beginning and in the beginning. Um, so it was a curse from God from the very beginning until the ends of age. So, I mean, think about it. It's a very big possibility because when he speaks, when God himself speaks, his voice holds power. His words are the power and authority itself. So yeah, they very well, very, 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 without a single shadow of a doubt in my mind, very possibly did have legs at one point. But when God cursed them to wallow in the dust on their belly for all the days of their, their life and existence, 
Well, I believe their their legs shriveled up, and basically that's what happened. That it, it's hard for probably everyday average folk to imagine that, but in my mind, I literally can imagine a serpentine light dragon's legs at that time and era and age shriveling up and basically falling off and then, then doing nothing more than wallowing or along the ground. Now, I'm not trying to justify other myths or legends, but what I'm trying to state and show is people take from the Bible and create their own is what that was about, guys. That's all that was about. And so please forgive me for getting off track. That's why I love the Word of God. That's why I love my God, my King, my Savior. It's because... He's amazing. He's awesome. Um, but we're going to get back into this, and I'm sorry, family. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I hope everyone's having a good morning today, though. Um, let me see here. Um, i got to find my scripture because I lost it when I missed Oh, there it is. Rather, train yourself in godliness for the... For the, this is verse 8. For the training of the body has limit has limits, or has limited benefit. But godliness is beneficial in every way. Since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. For this reason we labor and strive. Because we have put our hope in the living God, who is Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Instructions for ministry. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone despise your youth. God, forgive me for the times and the ages and the eras that I have been frustrated and agitated and angry. Whether about my youth or other people being young and their youth, Father, Forgive me in this category, because even I have fallen foolish in this regard. Um, I think we all have. Because there are times I complain about the younger generation, and I'm in the wrong for doing that, because we are all going to make mistakes. We are all going to do stupid stuff. But one day, Father, one day, each and every person that is called by name called by name and written down in your book of life since the very foundation of the dawn of time, Father, will come to you willingly and gladly and choose to live for you and follow you, Father. So please forgive me for the harshnesses of the harshness I've had on people and at any point I may come off harsh on anyone. And allow of me to be a proper example in my life and how to live for you and if only for you and nothing more. Take all that is me and remove it and put in more of you, Father, because I think we all have faults and failures, especially when it concerns griping and complaining and being agitated over the younger generation and some of their mistakes and, to be blunt, stupid choices. But honestly, we've all been there, Father. I've been there. Brother Jeremy's been there. I'm pretty sure Broken Envy's been there. I'm pretty sure my stepdad goes to true. I can guarantee you every single believer has been there. And instead of ridiculing, judging, being harsh, being cruel, being mean, we should be long-suffering, patient, and loving, and tender, and kind to those. And pray for them. Because they once knew the truth, and they are going through hard times. And in time, they are once called by your name. So they'll return one day, Father. So please, just be with me and help, for, or please forgive me for these things. Thank you. And your son, Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray and ask that. Thank you. Is that a Roy? Yeah, it's a Roy boy. I just prayed that for myself specifically. Um, but for anyone else... As well, just in case, you know, because I know we can sometimes be harsh, guys. Um, um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
Amen. Amen. The law is technically dead at that point, and we live by faith, mercy, grace, and love, and we choose to love others like Christ loved them at that point. We are able to walk truly in the footsteps and in the ways that we are meant to walk and live like and for Christ. And I, I myself desire to one day be able to walk and live my life like Christ. Maybe not be Christ, but to one day be able to walk and live like him and his his 12 disciples, you know? Um, even if the hardships come with it, you know? I, I don't mind. I, I get hardships come. Um, they're bound to come and happen, you know? Um, I also just want to be able to provide enough for my wife to know that we have what we need and we have our needs taken care of. But at the end of the day, that don't matter to me. Yeah, I desire an income, but at the same time, that ain't my foremost thought on here. I've had to express before, and I'm coming to realize that at the end of the day, it don't matter. It really doesn't. Yeah, it's nice. It's lovely. It's awesome. But even before me having an income, I would rather this be able to help others and be an outreach for others in some way, shape, and form, and hopefully hopefully be a ministry in some form to help others, even if I'm not meaning to be here to teach, preach, or any of that, just to live my life and to enjoy what, I, what I'm reading and stuff, you know? Um, I hope it's planting seeds in some way, shape, and form, you know? But thank you guys. I love you guys. Um, and I do thank you, brother, for all those wonderful, beautiful scriptures you're always popping off and playing in the morning for me. I am very grateful for that, for backing up with what I'm stating normally. So thank you very much, brother Jeremy. Um, uh, uh, wrong thing. They're basically playing a weird talking thing in the background, so I'm skipping that. I oh, will thank you, brother. Um... I lost my spot again. God bless it. Um, there it is. But set an example for the believers in speech and conduct in love and faith. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And impurity. Until I come give your attention to public reading, exhortation, and teaching, don't neglect the gift that is in you. It was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Practice these things. Be committed to them so that your progress may be evident, evident to all. Give me a minute, guys. I do apologize. Let me bookmark that again. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you so very much for letting me know that. Thank you. I am so sorry. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Sorry. I didn't realize it was a blue screen this morning. Um, thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Thank you to everybody for letting me know it's a blue screen today. I wasn't aware that it was. Um, verse 16, and we are on 1 Timothy, I believe. Uh, verse 16, God bless it. I can't remember what verse... 1 Timothy chapter 4, guys, verse 16. Um, pay close attention to your life and your teaching. Persevere in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And this is why, guys, that when I read the Word of God, I am so terrified and scared. This is coming from me. And when I say terrified and scared, I don't mean... I don't mean... Of the enemy. I'm not terrified or scared of the enemy in this regard. That's not where my fear comes from. When I refer reference my fear, I have a reverent fear of God. I have a reverent and most holy fear of God and unintentionally saying something and misleading people or speaking something that is not scripture based or based upon scripture when I'm reading. Okay, guys? So, that to me is more of a reverent fear than it is anything else. Um, I have a reverent fear of God for this sake. Um, I would rather do my best to read 
and teach and whatnot. Maybe not so much teach, but if I'm going to read or teach or read, I'd rather read and speak and give people as close as I know. And the only thing I truly know is a biblical God-given truth. And as close as the word as I can get, you know, I don't want to, um, I don't want to speak into people falsely. And that is a fear I honestly have. And the fact of being a reverent fear of God, of unintentionally leading people astray. And I don't want to ever do that. So, um, it's not that I'm afraid of doing what I'm doing, but it, it's the fact that when you read, speak, or even te teach others the word of God, you, you really, 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 there's a reason why people that are called to that are held to a higher standard or not by man. Please don't ever do it. The man, my fellow brothers and sisters, please don't ever put a fellow brother or sister on a podium or, or on a pedestal or anything like that. We are judged and held to a harsher and higher standard by God for what we are doing. And that's why my fear is reverent and why it's a reverent, a reverent fear of God in that, res in that respect. It's more of a respect and an honor. And um, I want to make sure I'm doing all that I can to respect and honor and be true to God, you know? to be with us, I say a daily prayer for him to guide my thoughts, words, and actions to let people see him through me. Yes, yes, we all need that. I, I Yeah, I definitely need that. But we all definitely need it, um, each and every one of us. I definitely agree with you, brother. Um, pay close attention to your life and your teaching. Perse persevere in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hear hearers. All right, we'll go into chapter 5. Um and then we'll probably continue on for a little bit longer because I'm enjoying the word today, you know. Um, that, and I can't help the fact that I enjoy reading the Bible. Um, you guys have brought me absolute joy. Well, I can't say it was you guys, but being on here and just reading it like this, I, I've never thought, when I'm reading it for myself mainly, yes, but when I'm also reading it, enjoying it at the same time, and being able to listen to music and share it with others, it's so much more enjoyable. And I, I never honestly thought it could be so much more enjoyable when you're doing it like that, you know? Um, but it has become an absolute massive enjoyment. Sorry, I've got sleep in my eyes, guys, because I didn't get time to get that out of my eyes this morning, and that's my fault. But chapter 5, um, it's a Christian Standard Bible, um, 1 Timothy. Don't, rebu don't rebuke an older man, but exhort, ex exhort him as a father. Um, imitate him, maybe? I think is what it says. Imitate him, I guess. But I don't want to imitate... Imitate him if he's doing wrong, especially. <laughs> we we shouldn't imitate the, them if they're doing wrong, I wouldn't think. But I, I don't know all things, and I, I, I'm only... <sighs> that can get confusing. Um, respect, I guess, maybe. Respect and honor him as a father. That would make more sense. Um... Younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with all purity. The support of widows, verse 3. Um, support widows who are generally in need. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them learn to practice godliness towards their own family first. Um, godliness towards their own family first. And to repay their parents for, the, for this pleases God. But if any widow has children, okay, sorry, my bad. And treat him, and treat him as a father. Okay, thank you very much, brother Jeremy. Thank you, I do appreciate that. Um. So, and treat would be the same thing as like treat him like a father figure, or consider him to be a father figure. You know, is what I is the simplest modern day terminology I think I can think to place it as, you know, um, but 
I could be wrong. Um, God led us to their own family first and to repay their parents. Oh, Lord. For this pleases God. The widow who is truly in need and left all alone has put her hope in God and continues night and day in her petitions and prayers. And prayers, however, she who is self-indulgent is dead. Ow. I'm only going to say one word. I'm not judging. My heart went straight and thoughts went straight to my mom. And that was all I was going to say. And when I say that, my mom and my faith. And that's the only reason I said that. And that my mind went straight to her when I read that. However, she who is self-indulgent is dead. Even while she lives. Command then she ain't even technically a widow. Because my dad ain't technically dead in my faith. Okay? Or in his faith. He's, he's alive again. He lives. Okay? He may have at one point been dead in his faith or struggling in his faith, but he, he currently lives in his faith, and I'm glad for that. Um, command this also so that they will be above reproach, but if anyone does not provide for his own family, especially for his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Thank you, Father. Thank you. That's all I can state for allowing me to be able to do this and to be able to live to the best capability that I can. Um, even if I don't know what I'll be able to bring in every month, I thank you for everything. Because honestly, yeah, I may be give, I may have been being given a SSI check every month. But at the same time, I never really felt as though that was me that provided for my household, sadly, guys. I felt as though the command of God on that one, I felt guilty of it, and it's always bothered me. And I wanted better, and I've always wanted better to provide for my household in my own way, and the only way I knew how. But I just, I didn't know if God would ever lap me. Um... But I'm thankful that he's helping me. I'm thankful that he's taking care of me and my wife and providing for me. In whatever way and manner and method he's doing it, he's doing something. And I'm definitely grateful and thankful to him for it. And I'm thankful to you guys and my community for everything. Um, I've decided that next month I'm actually, depending on how far I get to the 1600 sub goal, um... And how far we go over the 1600 sub goal, I'm actually going to actually, um, I'm actually going to end up giving 10% to my church like I always do. That's just what I want to do because I want to give back to God what is his and what truly belongs to him and take care of the storehouses, okay? But I'm also going to try to give to that one thing that you mentioned before, Brother Jeremy. Um, I want to start trying to do that monthly. I don't even care to write that off on taxes. I don't bother me. I do this because I want to, to help brothers and sisters in Christ overseas, you know. That's all that is to me. Um, but I also, depending on how far we get, I'm still going to dye my hair if we can meet the 1600 sub goal. Um, but then we're also, I'm thinking about, I hate Call of Duty. God bless it, I hate Call of Duty. But I've felt, fallen into temptation about wanting to try to go ahead and buy the new Modern Warfare 2. Yes, this old 32-year-old guy fell into the temptation of wanting to relive my youth. I have a problem, guys. <laughs> I have a problem of wanting to relive my glory days. Forgive me. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I Part of me really, really, really wants to relive my glory days. It's a massive temptation. And um, honestly, I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm thinking about wanting to hand a couple of those purchases out next month before the game is released, you know? Um... I don't think it comes out until October or something, but if we pre-order it, people will be able to, well, no, we have to pre-order before September, I think, but or the later part of September, and I ain't got the money to do that right now, but point is, I'm still going to pre-order it and give the codes away to people, or at least send them the money through PayPal and stuff so they can buy it, you know? Okay, 
and there's the Bibles and Christian literature they send to people who don't have access to the word. All right, cool, brother. That's nice and cool to know. Um, you'll have to share that link with me, brother, so I know what I'm getting into and so I can see that and know what they're doing as a whole. And honestly, I don't care. I, I really don't care. They don't. I don't want them or care for them to mention my name. I may have put the fact that I'm a streamer in there that I'm doing this on behalf of a brother in Christ, but I do not want recognition. I want you guys to do with this as you see fit. I want nothing in return, you know? Um, I want nothing in return for what they're doing. Um, I don't want recognition. I don't want any of that. I just want them to do with the money what they say fit, see fit that they're going to do. Um, but uh, I, I'm thinking about giving a gift to a couple people of $100, whether they want the Call of Duty game next month or not. Um, that's on them. They can buy the $100 version or they can buy what they're wanting out of the money I send them. But it depends on how far I'm able to go and how far we're able to go over the, the limit that I'm after, God be willing, or the limit that I'm hoping for. There's no guarantee God will allow me to reach that limit. Um or the bare minimal limit that I've tried to set. But, you know, we'll just trust him and see where it goes, you know. Um, but for now, we're going to get off that and we're going to go focus back on the word. Um, um, for his own, home, own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Okay, first nine. No widow is to be enrolled on the list for support unless she is at least 60 years old and has been the wife of one husband and is well known for good works. That is, if she has brought up children, shown hospitality, washed the saints' feet, helped the afflicted, and devoted herself to every good work, but refused to enroll your younger widows for when they are drawn away from Christ by desire, they want to marry and will therefore receive condemnation because they have renounced their original pledge. At the same time, they, have, they also learn to be idle, going from house to house. They are not only idle, but are also gossips and busybodies, saying things they shouldn't say. Therefore, I want younger women to marry, have children, and manage their, manage their households, and give the adversary no opportunity to accuse us. For some have already turned away to follow Satan. If, they believe, uh, believe, if, they, if any believing woman has widows in her family, let her help them. Let the church not be burdened so that it can help widows in genuine need. All right, give me a minute. I'll start on verse 17 in a minute. All right, thank you very much, brother. I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, honoring the elders. The elders who are good leaders are to be considered worthy of don't double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, do not... Mu Wait. Elders who are good leaders are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. For the, okay. For the scripture says, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker is worthy of his wages. I guess that's referencing someone who is speaking the word of God, I guess, or reading and or teaching or whatnot the word of God. Um is a metaphor is what it's meant to be is what I can assume. Um, but that is definitely beautiful. Um, definitely beautiful. Um, but yeah. Uh, hey Esper, what you doing, Bubby? You being a crack kitty? Huh? You want to go on camera, Bubby boy? This is my Esper Bubby boy. He's my wife's kitty cat. As for Bobby, you want to dance, Bobby boy? Huh? You want to dance? You want to dance, little man? Huh? There you go, little Bobby. You want down now? Go ahead. You want down? Go, Bobby.
I'm very grateful and thankful for everybody. Nice. How old? Um, how old's Esper? Um, I actually, uh, let's see here. I think. Oh, Lord. <sighs> I think they were born a few weeks or maybe a month or two before we got them. Maybe a couple months before we got them. And we got them around December to January of last year. Or, well, December of last year to January of this past January. So, uh, they'll probably be a year old either this coming December. Well, a Esper will be and Ash will be. Or they'll be a year old this coming January. Um, so it, it just depends. Um, but yeah. Um, the worker is worthy of his wages. Alright, verse 19. Don't accept an accusation against an elder unless it is supported by two or three witnesses. Publicly rebuke those who sin. Or who sin, so that the rest will be afraid. I solemnly charge you before God and Christ Jesus and the elect angels to observe those things without prejudice, doing nothing out of favoritism. Don't be too quick to appoint anyone as an elder. And don't share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Don't continue drinking only water, but use a little wine because of your stomachs. And frequent illness, some people's sins are obvious, preceding them to judgment, but the sins of others surface later. Uh, likewise, good workers are obvious, and those that are not obvious cannot remain hidden. All right, first off, guys, I want nothing to do with alcohol, so that verse can kiss my booty. God, forgive me. Please forgive me, Father, but I'm just saying your verse can kiss my booty. I'll drink the water before I'll drink the wine. <laughs> I don't mean to be mean, but that's just me, guys. I'll drink water any day of the week, every day of the week, before I'll touch any form of alcohol. Sorry. That is me. Um, I don't mean to spit in God's face or to spit on his word or to mock it, but I'd honestly rather not touch alcohol, sadly. Um, but that that's just me. I could talk about that all day long. I'd rather not. To each their own. But I don't want to touch it. <laughs> um, not going to condemn others who want at least a little bit to go with or whatever. You know, their water or whatnot. But I don't. Okay. Um, um, okay, we're going into the next chapter. Honoring masters, false doctrine, and human greed. And it's not saying honor the false doctrine and greed, but it's just saying honoring masters. It's telling you the titles of each thing, guys. All who are under the yoke as slaves should regard their own masters as worthy of all respect, so that God's name and his teaching will not be blasphemed. Let those who having or have believing masters not be disrespectful to them because they are brothers, but serve them even better. Since those who benefit from their service are believers and, and dearly loved, false doctrine and human greed, teach and encourage these things. If anyone teaches false doctrine, oh, forgive me for the yawn, and does not agree with the sound teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ and with teaching that, or with, and with teaching that promotes godliness, he is conceited and understands nothing, but has an unhealthy interest in disputes and arguments over words. From these come envy, quarreling, slander, evil suspicions, and constant disagreements among people whose minds are depraved and deprived of the truth, who imagine that the godliness is a way to a material gain, but godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can we can take nothing out of it. Agreed. We have food and clothing; we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation. Yes, we do if we're not careful. 
And we can and we will if we're not careful. It's not the fact that money is wrong. Money is a tool. But if we're not careful, guys, we will fall into the temptation of greed. And greed is very, very vile and evil and wicked. Okay? Because um, when you're greedy, you continue to take, 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 and take more from people who are like me and others who are like you all, all of us who struggle financially, they you'll they'll just continue to take, 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 and take some more. That is greed. Um, I don't expect my community community to give. I really don't. I don't expect my community to give nothing to me. Not that I'm not thankful when they do, and not that I'm not eternally grateful and thankful for each and every person that does give me subs or gift me subs or even biddies. I am definitely beyond blessed and thankful to each and every one of you because I know that I can't continue to update my streams and continue to keep on top of things and give you guys better quality stuff without keeping up to date with it. Um... But I'm also trying to do better. But I also know that I don't always have to have material items to do that, you know? Um, I can do it just by being awake more often, um, being happier, being more content, being thankful and grateful in anything and everything. The money at the end of the day doesn't mean anything. The money is a nice paycheck if I get one at all, and if, if any at all. To help me supply and pay my bills and take care of the needs of my household but if I don't well then I did something wrong and it's a screw up on my part and may God forgive me you know because I know it's going to happen there are things like that that can happen but I put my trust in God first and foremost before I do the money because the money is only meant to be a tool for me to provide for my wife a better lifestyle and to hopefully be able to help others and to gift others as a thank you for everything that I'm helped with. Um, but again, I don't think exactly being rich can be evil because yes, having more body, having more members of the body of Christ that were wealthy or had more money to give or in essence had an unending supply of funds to give to those in need. At that point, it shouldn't matter because you have too much. You shouldn't care. You should just be able to give freely and willingly. Because regardless of whether you've given freely and willingly, God is going to give back to you. Even if you don't expect him to or really need him to, he's going to give back to you when you give freely and willingly to others and help them. Okay? Um, I do struggle sometimes with wanting to do that, especially in my family. <laughs> I love my family. My mom and my dad, both biological and step, understand that I'm trying to do the best I can to provide for my family, and so do both my brothers, biological brothers, okay? And they made my day telling me they're very proud of me. They humbled me and made me cry in tears because I was thankful to hear them tell me that. I've never, I mean, yeah, they've all told me, my entire family's told me they're proud of me, but to hear each and every person in my family, biological, full-blooded, tell me they're proud of where I've come and where I'm at currently, thanks to God and what he's doing in my life, I can't claim or take glory for it all, but it's a humbling experience to feel those emotions roll off of them when they're telling me these things. No, I definitely agree. It's always been better about the heart. It's always been better about the heart. Christ never expects us to give abundantly. I mean, he says in Matthew, I believe, when he's talking about the little poor lady who is only able to give pretty much a penny or a half a penny's worth, which was her entire, which is all she had, which is what her entire household all had to live on at the time. She gave all that her and her household had left and put it in the tithes and offerings, okay? And he basically states, look, this woman gave all that she had and took out ten times that and gave it back to her, okay? 
And so she said she, that, that the poor give out of their brokenness and what out of, out of what they lack. The, those who struggle and who are really struggling and who, where they lack and they have very little, they give out of their lack of what they have, okay? But those who have abundance, they're given out of just pocket change, okay? So that pocket change doesn't mean really, sadly, anything to God. But what matters more to God is when we are really, truly wanting to give back to God out of our heart and out of our desire to want to give back to Him or to give to others willingly because we're thankful for what God is doing for us. Guys, that, it's a willingness of mind. But I also know that I have to be careful and that's why I got a little agitated because last, well, not last month, it was this, this month's payment. I got a little agitated because I, I took money out, uh, gave back. I wasn't agitated for taking out to give to the church. I was gladly given to the church. I took out 240 to give to, um, and basically what would be 10, 10, I don't know, I'd give or take 10% for ties. I wasn't able to take out the full 20% that I wanted to take out. Not tithes, but for 10% for taxes, my bad. I wasn't able to take 10% or 20% out for taxes, but I took out 10% for tithes, which I wanted to do willingly. I willingly gave out to those I wanted to give out, which brought us down to 1900 left, okay? 18 to 1900 okay? I was able to buy what I wanted to for the stream to be able to give back to my community, to be able to give back community-wise on my end to give back better stuff, okay? And then, um, what happened was my sister asked me to use, asked my wife to use my Amazon card, and I got a little agitated because I'm sitting there thinking funds. <laughs> I got to be careful because I still have to pay rent, and my landlord was wanting to hike up rent and stuff, you know? No, I definitely agree. I definitely agree, Brother Jeremy. I definitely agree. Um, but uh, that's why I put a little bit of stuff back into my stream so I could get better quality stuff. And there's still stuff I need to get, but it's more of a desire and a want, not really per se a need. They're just things I would like to get that would make things a little bit better, a little bit nicer, you know? Um, but whether I get there or not, it's all in time. I can't get everything I'd like to get at once, you know? It'll happen in time slowly, you know? Um, like right now, um, I've had to pay back payments to Social Security office. I wasn't expecting that one. Kind of hurt, but me and my wife are doing abundantly clear. She made enough to cover my lack this month. Even after everything that I made this month, she's covering my lack again. And that may be like that for a few months until we get our debt paid off. And my wife says that's fine. She's okay with me trying to cover the debt for her. Even if I may end up being lacking and being able to cover everything because she's working extra hours um, and I'm not able to cover everything on my end like I want to, I'm doing everything I can. You know, I'm giving back to my community. I'm trying to help out those in need and stuff like that. But my sister said that she didn't have Prime on Amazon. That's why she was asking us to buy it. Basically, my sister and my, or my sister gave my wife money back and sent it back over the whole cash at PayPal thing. Um, and so, uh, it'll, I, I think it was supposed to be in Friday. I don't know. I don't keep track of it. We supposedly got the money back. I know the first one we did. I don't know about the second one. I'm honestly not worried about it at this point. God will take care of me and my wife nonetheless, you know. Um, this past weekend was my sister's good day, you know, so we'll just let that slide, you know. But at the end of the day, it's not about money. Um, it'd be nice to be like that, but at the same time, it wouldn't be for me. It'd just be so I could provide better for myself and my wife. But I've also had to make clear my wife understands, even if we had four to six K a month to live on after taxes, she needs to understand that after I give back to my community and then focus on paying bills and stuff like that, and I, I take out the percentage for rent and whatnot, um, 
I also, um, I, uh, I don't want to live above our means. I would like a house of our own, yes, but we don't need to go buying an extremely extravagant a bunch of crap, is what I told her. There ain't no reason for it. Um, there just ain't no need for it. Because my dad pointed out to me, he says, ah, flip. Sorry, guys, that was really loud. Holy crap. Hey, Guitara. <laughs> that, wow. Um, thank you very much. That made me jump. <laughs> Lord Almighty. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Lord. That made me jump like hard, guys. Sorry about that. <sighs> Made me jump and scared scared me half to death, everybody. But thank you for that comedic relief. I hope you have a, I hope you guys are having a good time in here. But I had to explain to my wife I'd really rather not live beyond our means because it can do more crippling than any type of good, you know. Oh, there we go. But thank you for that comedic relief, dude. I kind of needed that, but whew, blew out my eardrums. Holy crap. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. We're going to go ahead and finish this chapter, and then we're going to go into, um, and that was the, which one was it? In Oh, that was Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, we're going to go into Bible, or we're going to go into gaming probably after this one. But we'll finish this chapter, and maybe the next one, give or take, unless it's the final chapter. No, I can't tell. Give me a minute. Yes, it's the final chapter, so we'll go into the next one after this. Um. Okay, so, but for the love of money is a root. A root of all kind of e kinds of evil. Agreed. That's why I don't want to live above and beyond me and my wife's means. Because I've always been low income. Always struggled. And to be quite honest, even if somehow or another I, I became wealthy, I don't want to keep it for myself. To be content to have enough in the savings account to fall back on or to have enough to put back in a few different savings account or investment accounts for the business. And if I wanted to run a computer build, building business, I'd have to have a funds to fall back on to keep buying that stuff. But at the same time, there's just a lot of stuff that goes into this, guys. But I don't know how I'm going to do it all, honestly. Um, there's, just so, there's just so little time in this world and... I enjoy so much between building computers, gaming, Bible reading. I'd love to be able to do a lot of it, you know? But I don't think I can do it all by myself. Um, fight the good fight. I will, brother. I will. Don't worry. I'll always fight the good fight. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that encouragement. I definitely, I definitely um, appreciate that. Um, uh, let's see here. I lost my spot again. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and by craving it, some have wandered away. Yes, yes, some have, ha some have. And when I focused on money so much, guys, this past year, I caused myself to stumble, and I have caused myself to fall. Okay. And that's a problem. And it's not the fact that I focused on money out of greed. It was the fact that I focused on money because I was worried about my household. Worried about debt. Worried about things in this life. But when we focus on things that it's meant to focus on. When we focus on God. When we focus on His kingdom. 
and we focus on the enjoyments and the gifts and the skills that he's given me and things like that. And we focus on the gifts and the abilities and the fruits, the things that he has blessed us with and give thanks and glory and honor to him for everything and do what we're called to do. Then the money at the end of the day ain't the priority. Yeah, those things would be great. Those things would be wonderful. They'd be amazing and awesome. But they're not a priority. But I've lost focus multiple times. So I'll be honest, I don't want them to be a focus. Um, I never want them to be a focus in my life. If I ever get money like that, I don't want to become so conceited and so greedy or so so stingy and so hateful that I am not willing to help others because I understand what it's like to live low income and that's where a lot of my frustration comes in at is that but I shouldn't be because that's where envy comes in and when envy comes in so does strife and where envy and strife are at jealousy's at and so that's why we should just continue to live our life for God and as Brother Alternate Gaming said, fight the good fight. Live our life for Christ and enjoy what he's given us. Be content. Be thankful and rejoice. You know, um, verse 11. When did you get a green? I've had a green screen, brother. I think I got it this past Saturday. It got here early. It was supposed to arrive Monday, but it arrived early. Sadly, I'm still learning how to use it. I'm struggling a bit here and there, and it may be a bit malfunctioned, and so I'm sorry I'm not the wisest with it. Not nah, crap. It looks like all the wording's screwed. Um, give me a minute, and I'll see if I can fix that. Please forgive me. I didn't realize how the green screen was looking. That is my fault. Mm. Here a minute, guys. I need to see something here. I need to lower my quality here a bit, maybe. I didn't realize that was all over the place today. 450. Oh, nope, there it is. Okay, let's see here. Oh, it's at 707. Let's put that back at 707, guys. Sorry about the issues on my end. Um. Oh, I'm not showing up at all now. <laughs> I'm not showing up at all. 400 maybe? Um, Please forgive me. I'm trying this real quick. Mm, no. 525. Still too high. All right. Well, let's see. Go to seventy, maybe. There we go. Um, well, crud. Um, let me see if I can get that fixed for you guys, cause yep, a dappa do dot days. That's being funky donkey. Um, hmm. Uh, 
Let's see if I can actually just add a picture maybe. Huh, that 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 one's actually not working half bad. So hold up, flashback no. Someone likes a hearse, darn it. One trigger no. Yeah. I don't like those. Those are gross. No nine. Ew. All right, well. Oof. 50 is what I think I had that at. Mm. 450, let's try that one again then. I'm trying to get this to work, guys. Please be patient with me. Mm. 142 maybe or no? Looks what 300 does. Oof. There we go. All right, cool. All right. Um, I guess what I'm gonna have to do is pretty much just move the green screen around for you. And I do apologize, everybody. Please forgive me. I forgot that was back there, but I got it Saturday as well. I bought it Friday or thir Thursday or Friday and it arrived Saturday. I might have to move my green screen around Maybe. Um, move it, cats. Leave it be. Is it getting it? No, it's not. It's not getting it all, darn it. I'm trying, guys. I've not messed with this that much. Move it, Esper Vesper. Move it, Bubby Boy. I hate these things. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. It seriously ain't gonna work. That's fine. I'll fix it later. That's my fault, everybody. Please forgive me on that one. Um... But yeah, we'll, we'll just deal with it later, you know? Um, um, so I was fight the good fight is where I was at. Yes, fight the good fight. Verse 11. But you, man of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of, faith, of the faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and about which you have made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God who gives life to all and of Christ Jesus who gave a good confession before Pontius Pilate, I charge you to keep this command without fault or failure until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. God will bring this about in his own time. He is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives, who, who, or yeah, who lives in a unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To whom be to him, be honor and eternal power. Amen. Oh, there's an S. Is there an action here? Yeah, there's an action here too. Instructions to the rich. Instruct those who are rich in the present age not to be arrogant, 
or to be or to set their hope on the uncertainty of wealth, but on God, who richly provides us with all things to enjoy. Instruct them to do what is good. To be rich is or to be rich in good works, to be generous and willing to share, storing up treasure for themselves as a good as a good foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of what wait, hold up. Let me reread that. Instruct them to do what is good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and willing to share, storing up treasure for themselves. Treasures in heaven, not on this earth. Treasure for themselves is a good foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of what is truly life. Guard the, guard the heritage. And I believe I understand what, the, I think this was talking about it. It's okay to... Let me just let me read it first, but I, I think I know what it's talking about, if I'm not mistaken. Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you, avoiding irrelevant and empty speech and contradiction from what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some people have departed from the faith. Grace be with you all. All right, guys. Um I believe that was all of 1 Timothy. Uh, I want, I, eh, the heck with it. We'll just continue. It's a good time to continue. <laughs> I'm enjoy reading it, and I hope everybody else is enjoy spending time here. I'm sorry. I, I like reading it. I don't mean to be rude or mean to anybody. I just like reading it. I'll go into gaming here in a bit. I'm just... I've not been able to read this many books, guys, or this much or this often since I was still in high school. Okay, guys? I've not enjoyed my reading in this way, shape, and form in a long time. And so to have this type of enjoyment and love for the Word of God, to be brought, to be brought back to that means a lot, you know? And so I'm grateful for it. Second Timothy chapter one, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by God's will, for the sake of the promise of life in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanksgiving. Verse three. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. Remembering your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I recall your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmother, Louise, and in your, and in your mother, uh, um, <laughs> Louise, and, um, Eunice, I guess. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the word very well. Please forgive me or the name. That was horribly butchered on my part, I think. Um, and now I'm convinced is in, convinced is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through lay, the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. Not ashamed of the gospel, so don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Instead, share in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time, before time began. This has now been made evident through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus, or Christ Jesus, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald, apostle, and teacher, and that is why I suffer these things. For I am not ashamed, because I know whom I, believe, whom I, ha whom I have believed. I am persuaded that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Mm -hmm. 
Be loyal to the faith. Hold on to the platform. This is verse 13. Or hold on to the pattern, not platform. My bad. A sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good God or guard the good deposit. Weird word to use. I thought it was something else. Um, guard the good deposit through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You know that all those in the province of Asia have deserted me. Oh Lord. Including Pi Sigelus and Hermogene. Words. I hate words. Hermogenus. May the Lord grant mercy to the household of Paul, mean you're going to fight, man. Mean you're going to fight big time. Stop with the words, my dude. Household of Onesiphorus. Because he often refreshed me. i sorry. I had to throw a little bit of Japanese or a little bit of how to pronounce it in there. Because I didn't know any other way of how to word it. It just looked like it was onesie. Forest, maybe. Yeah, onesie forest. I don't know. It just looks weird, but it also looks like it would be... If it had an I in there, it'd be Oni Sephiris or Forest, but I don't know. We're just going to leave it be because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he dil dil diligently searched for me and found me. May the Lord grant that he obtain mercy from him on that day. You know very well how much he oh, how much he ministered at Ephesus. And I don't need to read footnotes. Change a lot. Sorry, I was getting into some uh <laughs> that was uh Toby Mac. I remember singing this when I was younger. God almighty, that's a great song. Um, where's it at? Where's it at? Where am I live at here? Not live, but what song is playing here? Boomin' is the name of it. Boomin' is the name of the song. Um, it's by Toby Mac. Such an amazing song. It's op Opera Trip Interlude. It's called Boomin'. Um, he's got the city, or gate, or si keys to the city, but the gates are locked. I love it. <laughs> I used to sing a lot of these songs growing up. When I was on my on my uh, uh, high school bus as a senior in high school, I didn't care. I would literally just start praising and worshiping um, out loud on the bus, not give a flying flip about what anyone thought. I would just close my eyes and just start singing and praising, pra giving praise and worship, you know? Um, but that's who I once was, and maybe still can be, God be willing, once I learn the songs all well enough, you know? But I've got to get back into these great and awesome songs. We are going to actually get ready to end the stream as of today. But as you guys can see, I am bookmarking this. I call it Bible research because I was doing a lot of scripture research um, for my Bible readings and stuff. So I'm gonna, that's where I bookmark or place a lot of my Bible stuff at. So we're going to put that right there. For this reading and we're going to go ahead and get ready to end this, this stream and go into gaming for a bit this morning right, we're to go out we are going to pray and um bless everyone and thank everyone for coming in and ask god to bless everyone on their way out so father god i thank you for coming in and spending time with us today i thank you for your presence i thank you for your peace father i thank you for each and every person that came in and checked out my channel <sighs> Whether they wanted to stay or whether they wanted to leave, Father, that is fine. I bless them regardless, Father, and I ask of you to please be with them as well, Father. Father, I ask of you to please be with each and every brother and or sister that came in with me today and spent time here, Father. And I ask of you to go with them and send your Holy Spirit ahead of them as they go out and do their own thing today. And I ask of you to go with them in peace, Father, and allow your presence to remain among them. Father, and allow, I ask of you to please allow it to remain among this stream and the next stream that I get ready to go into, Father, for video games. Father, I praise and I worship and I give glory and honor and respect to your name.
your son Jesus Christ whom I pray and ask, Father. Thank you. Thank you for this day and thank you for this peace and presence, Father. Amen, Father. Thank you. All right, guys. I love each and every one of you. Thank you so very, very much for spending time with me today. Um, I'm grateful to each and every one of you guys, and I hope you guys have a lovely and wonderful time. I'm going to quote a scripture here, um, and I'm going to send you off with that for the rest of the day. Unless you guys want to return um, for my next stream for gaming. All right, we're going to do some more Final Fantasy XIV and collect more stuff. I love you guys. I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Hopefully it pops it up. There we go. Thank you there, by, uh, chapter verse. You're much appreciated. Love you guys later, and God bless each and every one of you guys. You guys are awesome. I enjoyed each and every one of you guys being here with me. You guys are a wonderful crew and a, wo a wonderful family to have in here each and every day. Um, I enjoy family just spending time with me in Bible reading. I've never been here to teach or preach, but... I enjoy reading the word and listening to music on my end. Even though I know my community can't hear it no more, I uh, have a way of preventing myself from getting in trouble so that way others can actually listen to the Bible reading without a muting or without my VOD being muted. But nonetheless, I enjoy that, and I'm thankful for each and every one of you guys. God bless you, and I'll see you all maybe here in a bit. God be willing if you guys are able. But if not, then I thank you, and God bless you nonetheless. Love you and see you in a bit.